So thank you, thank you, thank you. This, uh, this talk, um, when I decided on the title uh, a month ago, because Re uh, Reverend Rachel wanted a title, so the title is, uh, What Do You Bring to the Potluck? And of course, when I thought about this a month ago, it had nothing to do with what my talk is going to be today. So that's always fun. Um, but I also I know I've got a lot of uh, some friends here from the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living down the street. But I have to say that I'm kind of um, I'm kind of glad I'm not there today. the The congregation has been kind of like snipping at each other. The men and women have been snipping at each other because there's this big argument about who should make the coffee, <laughs> right? Yes. So the women are saying the guys should be making the coffee, and the guys are saying, no, no, you guys should be making the coffee. And so last Sunday, one of, the, well, one of our elders, one of our women stood up and said, oh, no, 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 no. It is in the Bible that the guys are supposed to make the coffee. <laughs> so the guys were like, what? <laughs> Where in the Bible does it say that we're supposed to make the coffee? She said, Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews. <laughs> Not to see where that argument goes today. Uh, oh my! Oh. Um, the last time I talked here, I just I am just so grateful because I just want you to know that like I walked on air for like a whole week afterwards. Um, sharing with you was such such an amazing process for me. So when Reverend Rachel asked me to come back, there was like no question. I was like, I'm pretty sure I was standing outside the door a month ago waiting. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, so as I said, the, the, the title of my talk today is What Do You Bring to the Potluck? And so I have three points. They're going to be very quick. You might miss them. So the first point <laughs> is going to be spiritual growth is an inside job. The second point, we're responsible for our own lives. And the third point, and even so. So, um, the original intent of this title was to talk about that our spiritual growth is an inside job. That no one gets to do it for us. That we have to step forward and do our own spiritual growth. So I remember at the beginning of my journey into metaphysics, I felt like I was at the dessert table of the potluck because I just discovered some of these concepts like we are one and, and um, change your thinking, change your life. And, and I could literally pray myself a parking space. I was so excited. I was at the dessert table. I was like, yes. But then I kind of stuck with it. And I realized, oh my God, there's some work involved in this. Oh, crap! I learned things like, you have to do forgiveness work. Oh my God, you have to watch what you're saying. Sometimes you have to uh, give up the people you're hanging around with. Sometimes you have to um, you have to be in your gratitude. That's a lot of work. But, you know, so when I went to the potluck this time, I kind of felt like I was at the beverage table, you know, watching everybody else get to eat because it was hard work. But in this world of instant gratification, our spiritual growth takes time. And you got to do stuff. You got you to gotta step into prayer. You got to step into meditation. I stepped into service. I stepped into tithing. I took classes. I taught classes. And it became, it became much easier. My life changed. I took responsibility for my life. When things weren't going the way that I wanted them to, I had to stop and I had to look into the mirror because I realized that it was my work, that if something wasn't working, 
oh my God, it had something to do with me and how I was showing up. Hi. But I've been doing this for a while now, and I feel like when I show up at the potluck that I actually am at the main table now, that I actually get to partake in the, um, the food that is brought. Some of it is prepared by hand, some of it is brought with love, but I feel like I'm at that table, and that I get to eat from that. Um, and I'm constantly reminded about what it is that I bring to the potluck. And then the phone rings. My friend Mickey, who I love dearly, she's a hoot to be around, and she's also a mother figure for me. She's not feeling well, so they're going to go do some tests. Well, I got this. I got her prayed up. I know the truth. This is going to be taken care of. And then the phone rings. They found a mass. They don't know what it is. But they're going to do some more tests. Okay, well, I got this. I'm praying her up. I know the truth. Positive attitude. I got this. And then the phone ring. And we are now at a stage four carcinoma, aggressive, non surgical, needs to be in chemo now. So my spiritual self kind of got put to the side because my human self showed up. And I was sad and I was upset and I didn't know what to do because Mickey is a really good friend of mine. And I'm the type of person, she's the type of friend, I would take her to her appointments, I would sit with her during her chemo, I would bring food even though I don't cook. <laughs> I would do whatever was needed. But Mickey... Winters in Florida, and she summers in Alaska, and so right now, she's in Florida. And so I can't show up to take her to appointments. I can't sit with her while she's taking chemo. And so I, wow. So I'm like, wow. Wow, I'm really feeling human. And so I had to step back and I had to go, what is my spiritual truth? What is my spiritual truth with this? And my spiritual truth is that I absolutely believe that her body has everything it needs to heal. I absolutely believe that her positive attitude will change this outcome. I absolutely believe that she is surrounded by everything she needs. And that I absolutely believe that this condition is not predetermined. And. So it's no mistake, you know how spirit works. You're going to get what you need. You just have to look for it. So it's no mistake that I happen to pick up um, the Chicken Soup of the Soul book with random acts of kindness. And I started to read all of these amazing stories of people doing the smallest of things. <clears throat> now I'm changing this concept of random acts of kindness. I want us to think of conscious kindness. Conscious kindness. Now, at the same time, I thought of, have you guys heard of the chaos theory, the butterfly effect? Have you heard about this? So I'm going to actually read 
the definition of this. So the butterfly effect is the sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a small change in one state of a nonlinear system can result in a large difference in another state. So what are they really saying? <laughs> if a butterfly flaps its wings in Anchorage, Alaska, it can affect Florida. Mm -hmm. The smallest action can send that ripple out and change the world. One of my favorite stories in the book is called The Five Dollar Project. And so uh, they've done this in schools, they've done this in congregations. And so what they did is they gave everybody an envelope. Have you passed these around? With five dollars in it. And they said, go do good with this $5 and report back. So you'll notice that I have my email address on that. And yes, there's a $5 bill in there. Because I'm going to ask all of you to help me with what I'm going to call the Mickey Project. And I'm going to ask you to take this five dollars and do a conscious act of kindness. Now, some of these kids went out with their five dollars, they went and they got hot chocolate from Dunkin' Donuts and then took it to a bus stop on a really cold day. Some other people um, actually combined their five dollars and probably threw in some money and actually threw a birthday party for someone who was turning a hundred. Some other people bought some gloves for the homeless. I'm asking you to help me create a ripple of kindness that we're going to send the energy to Florida to surround Mickey so that I know in my heart that when she needs something, that it's going to happen because of what we're going to do right here. Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to close out with some quotes. Um, <coughs> by the way, the story of Mickey, all of this has just transpired over the last 14 days. Uh, she did her first chemo treatment last week. So, My first quote that I want to share with you. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. That was from Edward Burke. Carry out a random act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. I was from Princess Diana. My <coughs> favorite, favorite quote for this. One shoe can change your life. And that was said by Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you bring to the potluck? I'm going to bring you to Mickey's potluck because I see spirit in your eyes. I feel spirit in your hands. And I know that spirit is beating in your heart. So, 
I'm stepping in to absolutely knowing that I bring you to this public. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.